Hi there. So, when Splatoon, a completely new Nintendo franchise taking on a new genre for the company, released in 2015, it seemed like a flash in the pan for Nintendo. However, in 2017, this was shown not to be the case when ARMS was released. It too was a completely new franchise, with new characters, art and music, and aside from Punch-Out, was Nintendo's first ever fighting game. Also, it was very fun. But how did this one-of-a-kind fighter come about? Well, let us find out as we journey through ARMS' development history. It was the mid-2010s, and one day developer Kosuke Yabuki was chatting with fellow developer Shintaro Jikumaru when they came up with the question, can you make a fighting game with the camera behind the player? However, they soon realised why nearly every fighting game was shown from a 2D side-on perspective. From this view, it's easy to judge the distance between the players. If the camera was behind the player, it would be almost impossible to judge how far away your opponent was. Hmm, could this problem be solved? Yabuki looked to his years of experience working on the Mario Kart series. In these games, obstacles in the distance gradually moved closer and closer, and the player had to move around them. Since the camera was behind the player, it was indeed difficult to tell exactly how far away they were, but that wasn't important. The important part was steering around them. Yabuki and Jikumaru realised that if they could somehow transfer that concept over to a fighting game, then a behind-the-player perspective might just work. So, how could they change the question from, will my attack reach my opponent, to, will it hit them or miss them? The idea they settled on was a fighting game where the players had super long attacks reaching across the whole arena. Since they travelled further, the other player could try to move out the way before they arrived, just like in Mario Kart. That was it! Yabuki realised that this was an exciting idea, so he got working on a prototype right away. It was around that time that Nintendo were in the midst of developing their new console, the Nintendo Switch. It was to have two separate controllers, or Joy-Cons, each with motion control capabilities built in. Yabuki realised these two motion controllers were perfect for this new game, and so the prototype was put together. To utilise the Switch's advanced motion controls, the player could curve their attacks by twisting their fists. Now, although they focused on motion controls, adding button input was important to Yabuki. The Switch had a big focus on customizability, being able to play however you like. Adding button inputs would let players play however felt most comfortable to them. Now, after getting this basic prototype in place, the developers realised that they could transfer this long attack concept over to minigames as well. Now, this prototype was a big success. Even with rudimentary graphics, the game was hugely fun, and so development of this new fighting game began. So, although the development team had the basic mechanics down, they didn't really have any kind of world or theme. The first inspiration to them was the world of professional sports. In the words of art director Masaki Ishikawa, each fighter has these super intense, passionate fans who kind of copy their look and feel, and come into the arenas to support their chosen fighter. The team wanted their game to reflect that kind of camaraderie, where fans support the fighters they love. But of course, these fans would need some kind of characters to support. The team knew they needed characters who could reach across a large arena, but what would they look like? At first, they tried out characters whose fists extended across the arena, but that didn't feel dynamic enough. The movement felt too small and weak, somehow. Hmm, what if the characters didn't reach out, but instead held on to some kind of whip-like object? No, that wasn't right either. Eventually, the team tried out over 100 different character designs, but still none of them felt like the right one. Then, they hit upon the idea of, rather than making the characters' fists extend, making their whole arms extend instead. That was it! Now the player felt like they were the fighters. It was much easier to put yourself into the game mentally. It wasn't long before they came up with the corkscrew-armed designs that we know and love. Of course, what made professional fighters in the real world interesting was their unique identities, so the developers knew they had to make each one of their characters interesting and different from the others. 
The first idea for a theme they had based on the corkscrews was naturally springs. So for the first character, the team really lent into that, creating a character with springy hair and the undeniably springy name of Springman. Now, for the other characters, the team looked to other spring-like objects for inspiration. For example, a ribbon, which reminded Yabuki of the style and grace of a pop star. This became the inventively named Ribbon Girl. To complete the pop star theme, the team hired an actual singer to be her voice actress. Next, they thought of chains, which reminded them of a ninja. You see, as well as the traditional shuriken weapons, ninjas have a weapon called the Kasarigama. This became the basis for Ninjara. Next, they thought of bandages, which led to mummies. However, there were a ton of mummy characters in other games, so Yabuki decided to change it up a little from the traditional weak, limping mummy type character and go with a super muscly character instead, which eventually became Master Mummy. Now, a regular fixture of the developer's office was ramen. See, this picture is of some actual arms developer ramen. Now, one day the team realised that this ramen too would make a perfect base for a character. They decided to give this character asymmetrical arms, with one being a strand of noodles and the other becoming a dragon arm when charged up. This eventually became Min Min. Next, they thought of snakes. Now, instead of taking that idea in a kind of jungly direction, they decided to theme the character around an extreme sports person. This led to Kid Cobra. Some of the developers came up with some more outlandish ideas too like a girl genius obsessed with extendable arms who doesn't have any herself, so she builds a robot suit. This became Mechanica. The next long thing the team thought of was also a little weird, DNA. From that, the team thought up the idea of a kind of globby blobby character, eventually becoming Helix. Now for their next character, the team had an idea for someone who fights with their hair. But why would they use their hair? Ooh. What if they were using their arms to pose gracefully? That led the team to the idea of an actress, which became Twintel. Now for this character, the team consulted many people from both Nintendo of America and Nintendo of Europe to try and create a character with international appeal. And people certainly like her. I'm not sure if that's for the reason Nintendo intended though. The other characters were designed in this fashion, with unique themes and colourful designs, leading to a memorable roster of unique and interesting fighters. Right, now it was time to develop the arenas that the characters would fight in. Yabuki had a lot of experience designing 3D stages from his work on Mario Kart, but he knew that he would have to tone it down a little. Stages as complex as the ones in Mario Kart would get in the way of a serious fight. Instead, the developers limited themselves to one or two 3D obstacles in each stage. For example, the trampolines in Springman's stage, which launch players into the air. Or the rising cubes from the floor in Ribbon Girl's stage, which provide cover. The following stages were developed in this way too, which led to a set of stages that were interesting and distinct from each other, but not overly distracting. Now, when developing these arenas, the team made a big effort to make the world and characters seem believable. They included fake logos, for example, both on the character's clothes and the arenas too. The sound design was also drawn from this strive for believability. Just like in a real sports game, the crowd cheers when you're doing well. The music was highly energetic too, to convey the drama of a sports match. And so, on June 16th, 2017, ARMS was released. Critically, it was a hit, being described as creative and addicting. Sales-wise, it went on to rack up over 2 million copies, which is not too shabby for a brand new series. Now, I've heard before that ARMS is to the fighting game what Mario Kart is to the racing game, or what Splatoon is to the online shooter. I totally agree. And I have to say, I love that trend. There's so many genres that Nintendo haven't had a crack at yet, and I'd love to see them take on more in their own uniquely Nintendo way. Here's to whatever they try next. Hi there! Thanks for watching to the end, I hope you found this video interesting. I really love ARMS' feel, the music and the atmosphere. It's very Nintendo in a way I love. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say. I guess if you're new here, hi! If not, thanks for the continuous support. Wow, that sounded weirdly corporate. Oh no, you found me out, I'm Jeff Bezos in disguise! Uh, I'm gonna go now, bye!